Hi guys, Miss Cross here, ready for math on digital learning day two. And today's lesson is going to be similar to yesterday's. So again, I would suggest you have open the slides on one window on your device and the video in another. And whatever is more comfortable for you if you want to listen to the whole video and then go back and look at the slides. Or if you want to pause the video and look at the slides as we go, whatever way works for you. Um, again, I have edited these slides a little bit, so they're going to look slightly familiar from when we talked about measurement a few weeks ago, but I have changed them a little bit, and I've added in um, some problems that we're going to work on solving today together before you solve problems on your own in MobyMax. Um, so I'm going to read through the slides for you, and I'm going to do a little work uh, back there on the wall in just a couple minutes to show you how some of this looks on paper, okay? So, if you remember, our learning targets for this week are all about describing different units of measurement, understanding the differences between metric and customary units, and being able to convert units within one system. So, for instance, knowing how many grams are in a kilogram, how many milliliters are in a liter, or how many cups are in a gallon, and we're gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, we're also going to be making some tables um, to record units and solving problems using different units of measurement. So today on the slideshow, you're going to go to the day two slides. I'm just scrolling through them myself. Okay, and you're gonna start with your estimation 180. So if you want to pause the video and look at the picture, make some estimates that are way too low, make some estimates that are way too high, and then some estimates that you think could be the actual amount of cheese balls that fit on the large plate. Be sure you're practicing writing these numbers and saying them out loud, reading them, so you are practicing some of that number sense and place value. Okay, go ahead and pause, do your estimation 80, and then come right back. Okay guys, I hope you were close in your estimates on cheese balls. All right, today we're going to talk about capacity. And capacity is the amount of liquid that fits inside of a container. You might also hear this or see this referred to as liquid volume. They're similar. Um, but for today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the word capacity, okay? So just like with mass, which we talked about yesterday, there are customary units and metric units for capacity. Um, when we use the metric system, and remember the metric system is usually a lot easier because it relates really well between hundreds and thousands, um, and it's easier to convert sometimes. But when we talk about a little small measure of volume or capacity, we use something called a milliliter. All right, and we write this with a lowercase m and an uppercase l, milliliter. That's the abbreviation. Now, I found this in my cabinet, and you guys might want to look in your drawers or cabinets at home because you probably have measuring cups, measuring spoons, different things that you can actually work with while you're at home um, and explore some of these measures together. So I found this little measuring cup, and I know you guys probably can't see it, but on this side, it says one teaspoon. You guys know about how much a teaspoon is. That's if you took a spoon and filled it with water or sugar to put in your tea or something, that's a teaspoon. So it's not very much. But if I turn it around to the back, I see that the same mark for one teaspoon is the same as five milliliters. So when I think of one milliliter, which is way down here, it's just this little bit, it is really, really small. So can you think of anything that we would measure in milliliters? It would have to be pretty small, right? The number one thing I think of is medicine. When Shelby or little Elliot need medicine, I usually have to look at the bottle and read how many milliliters um, that they take. And I usually use something similar to this when I give them their medicine. All right, so that is the small unit for capacity. The bigger unit that we're gonna talk about is a liter. Okay, and we abbreviate this with an uppercase L. So milliliter is little m, big L. Liter is big L. Now, a thousand of these 
one milliliters makes up a liter. Okay, so I didn't find anything that was exactly a liter, but I did find this really big water bottle. And this is Mr. Elliot's. He likes to drink these big waters. And I noticed on here that it says 3.78 liters. So three and 78 hundredths of another liter. So almost four liters in this big bottle. Okay, so if... 1,000 of these little one milliliters make up one liter, and this is 3.78. How many milliliters would fit into this bottle? Can you think about that? I think it would be 3,780. So I would have to fill this up a whole lot of times and pour it in here to fill this up. All right, we're going to talk about the same bottle again in just a minute. So liters and milliliters. We might think of liters when we measure soda. So you might get a one liter soda or a two liter bottle of soda. Most of us know about what that looks like. All right, in the customary system, there are four different units that we use to measure capacity. And I'm going to have them up on a chart behind me. I'm going to show that to you in just a minute. But going from smallest to largest, the smallest unit is a cup. Then we have a pint, then we have a quart, and then we have a gallon, all right? So just like in the metric system where milliliters and liters are related, these customary units are related also, okay? The smallest unit we use for capacity is a cup. A cup is about how much milk you would pour onto your cereal for breakfast, and I forgot to grab a measuring cup, but I'm sure you probably have one of these at home and you can look at it. Uh, but that's about the amount that goes in a cup. Okay, so the next unit in the customary system for measuring capacity or liquid volume is a pint. And you might have seen this on your milk carton at school. It says a half pint. Two cups make up one pint. So if you have one carton of milk, which is a half pint, you have about a cup of milk. Um, and most of us can picture what the school milk cartons look like to show us how much milk or how much liquid would be in half a pint and two of them would be one pint. All right, the next unit we use in the customary system is called a quart. Now two pints make up one quart. So you can think if we had four school milk cartons and poured them all into one container, that would be a quart. And on the slide you can see some pictures of quarts and these are like the milk containers at school, but it's stretched out. It's taller and thinner. That's about a quart. You might have also heard your dad or your mom talk about oil for your car. You might need a quart of oil. That's another thing we measure with that. Okay, the big unit we use for customary capacity is a gallon. And most of you probably have a gallon of milk in your refrigerator right now. It's that big, big jug. It is equal to four quarts. Now, I told you we were gonna bring this big bottle back. Not only does it say 3.78 liters, it also says one gallon. So this bottle of water is the same as a gallon of milk, which would be four quarts, okay? So before we do a problem, I wanna show you the first chart that I have back here. All right. So, this was our problem from yesterday, so I'm just kind of working on the same paper, and I want to be sure you know what these look like written out. And if you want to pause the video and write this down in a journal or on a piece of paper so you have it to help you remember, that might be a really good idea. So, for the metric system, a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. And for the customary system, I drew them from smallest to largest to try and help you see that the smallest is a cup, then we have a pint, then a quart, and then a gallon. And each one is a little bit bigger than the one before it. So you're going to need to remember this. So you might want to write it down. Two cups is equal to one pint. Two pints is equal to one quart. And four quarts is equal to one gallon. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here and then I'm going to put another piece of paper on top of it as we solve two problems together before you do some practice on your own. So you'll see this problem on the slides right after the one with the gallon of milk. All right, so in this problem, we have Cullen and Suman 
and Joshua. Hi guys. It seems that you're selling lemonade today. So I went ahead and made a chart here because we can't really underline on our slides unless you print them out, but we do want to still remember to pick out those really important numbers and words in our problems. So I've written it here. Cullen brought one and one half liters of lemonade. Suman brought two liters of lemonade. And Joshua bought 450 milliliters. And the question is, how many total milliliters of lemonade did the boys have? So it's ask me about milliliters. And I look here, I see milliliters, liters, and liters. So I'm going to have to do something with these liters to turn them into milliliters. Can you think of what we might do? First off, I'm going to look at this first one, Cullen's amount, one and one half. I'm going to think of another way of writing that, and I'm going to think back to decimals. Let me show you guys can see that. Does anybody remember how to write one half as a decimal? I'm going to do one. Here's my decimal, and if you remember, 0.5 is the same as a half. So he has 1.5 liters, okay? Now... If you remember back here, we saw that 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter. So, if he has 1.5, how many milliliters does he have? So, this 1 is equal to 1,000, and that 5 is equal to 500. So he has 1,500 milliliters. Now, Suman's two liters is how many thousand milliliters? Two. Now, Joshua's is already in milliliters, so do we need to do anything to that? No, it's already in the right unit. So the question was how many total? So the operation you should be thinking of is addition. So we're going to line these up. Being sure our place values are all lined up neatly. And we're just going to add them up. So we have 0 plus 0 plus 0. 0 plus 0 plus 5. 5 plus 0 plus 4, which is 9. And 1 plus 2, which is 3. So all together they have 3,950 milliliters of lemonade. All right, so you're going to do some problems like that in just a minute on Moby Max. We're going to look at one more. And this time, Valeria has two gallons of punch. And she wants to share that punch equally with four friends. She's not keeping any for herself. She's giving it all away. But I need to know how many quarts. That's my unknown. I don't know how many quarts she has. So I'm going to look back at this chart, and this is why it's a really good idea for you to write this down so that you can see that 4 quarts is equal to 1 gallon. But she has 2 gallons. So if 4 quarts equals 1 gallon, then how many quarts is going to equal 2 gallons? We're going to have to multiply that by 2. Okay, so some of the problems you're going to solve, you're going to have to do some conversions like this. Go ahead and write these things down if you haven't. Just pause the video and copy them down onto your paper. And let me know on Dojo if you have any questions. Um, so we worked on our customary metric units for capacity. We are doing this digitally. I hope you guys are having a good day. I miss you. I will see you soon. Bye.